Winked Mommy I want to remind you of an amazing story that can be mistaken for the plot of a science fiction movie, but it was the reality of 1914. Imagine, a group of brave merchants sets off across the ocean in search of undiscovered artifacts, and they find it, a glass sarcophagus like in a fairy tale, and inside it, oh a miracle, a sleeping priest named Gomez, straight from the lost city of Atlantis. At the bottom of the ocean, our heroes also found other items, for example, rods with text in an incomprehensible language. Scientists were able to decipher them, and now we know that this priest volunteered to go into a long sleep in order to return one day and tell about his lost city. However, there is another interesting thing. This is not the only sarcophagus. As the text indicates, there are many of them, and each of the priests wakes up once a century to check whether humanity is ready to accept the knowledge of the great Atlantis. And if we're still not ready, they go back to their dream. The story gets even more interesting. The sarcophagus falls into the hands of the Soviet secret service, where it begins its thorough study. And here something unusual happens. When the leading figures of the country came to look at this find, everyone fell ill. But there is an explanation. I have repeatedly said that people get sick because of an infection that lives with mummies. Another sarcophagus was found by Turkish archaeologists, but instead of celebrating their discovery, they ended up in court as the government classified their discovery. There was a being inside that could have been a human, but it wasn't. It was a creature with huge eye sockets, no nose or ears, and incredibly thin fingers. And wings, guys! Real wings! It seems that before us is representative of an alien civilization. The sarcophagus appeared to be made of glass, but in fact it was incredibly strong and consisted of an unknown material containing at least 15 different minerals. Incredible, isn't it? How real do you think the story is? Are there really mummified monks who are able to wake up once every 100 years? After all, we know of cases when the ancient monks with the help of meditation plunged into a deadly sleep, though we still have no recorded cases of awakening. Write your opinion in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. 3 Skulls and Technological Devices Let's talk about a mystery that I was able to discover by literally digging on the internet. And although there is little information about this, and not a single article has been confirmed by official sources, I feel that I just need to share this with you. In 2014, in Antarctica, Russian scientists reportedly found three human skulls that are over 80,000 years old. They found them in a thawed cave. The Russian explorers repeatedly got there earlier than their American colleagues, despite their great desire to get there. This story has become a hot topic among supporters of the theory of the existence of Atlantis and Hyperborea. Some argue that the skulls belong to representatives of these mythical civilizations. According to reports, in 2019, an article appeared stating that the skulls were elongated, like those of the Peruvians from the Paracas Caves. And here's the thing, after 2019, there is even less information. But an interesting detail came from America. Steve Alex Bonet, a former polar explorer, said in a podcast that the Russians had found not only the skulls, but also the technology of an ancient civilization. Moreover, he suggested that this civilization could be extraterrestrial. Maybe it's all just a fantasy, but let's pretend it's true. Then, the Russian polar explorers found the technology of an ancient civilization, perhaps even aliens, and it is not surprising that the Academy of Sciences is trying to hide this information. If all this is true, then the polar explorers deliver these artifacts to scientific institutes where they are currently being studied. And who knows, we may soon learn about new technological breakthroughs thanks to their work. So let's wish the scientists good luck and dive into the next archaeological stash together. 2-meter human skeletons and now I will tell you about an amazing archaeological find, anthropomorphic seals that depict a human figure. They seem to stand guard over the ancient tomb of the early Bronze Age. But what is even more surprising is that inside the tomb, they found the remains of people quite tall even by today's standards. They were covered with red ochre, and scientists believe that they may be the ancestors of modern Europeans. Imagine, our ancestors could be basketball star players today! Archaeologists discovered these remains in the Prednistrovia in the Grigoriopol region in May 2023. Scientists suggest that they may be up to 5,000 years old, but we will know the exact dating only after radiocarbon analysis. 
And who are these ancient people? Everything indicates that they were nomadic pastoralists, often hunted and sometimes even encountered wolves and bears, judging by the remains found in the graves. But this is where things get even more interesting. In Transnistria, archaeologists have found a children's tomb, and inside of it is a stone in the shape of a heart. Researchers are sure that this is part of the burial rite of the Yamnaya culture. These amazing discoveries are made by archaeologists, and these are only seven burials that they explored. Who knows what awaits us next? Watch this video to the end, it will be even more interesting. 3,000 year old mummy. An amazing archaeological find was discovered right on the football field in Peru. And it's not a joke. Imagine a stone tomb found on top of a hill near a soccer team's training ground in Lima, Peru. And inside it is a 3,000-year-old mummy. And this is not just a random burial. Just think, these people who lived 3,000 years ago sacrificed one of their own right here in the temple. Specialists from the University of San Marcos and local researchers came across the remains of hair and a skull in a cotton knot during excavations. Miguel Aguilar, archaeologist and director of the Rimac Historical and Cultural Center, said the mummy belongs to a pre-Hispanic culture that flourished in the Lima valleys between 1500 and 1000 BC. But there seems to be something even more surprising. Together with the mummy, coca leaves and shells were found, and this indicates that all this was part of a ritual sacrifice. Just think, this man was sacrificed during the construction of, of this temple. The thing is that sacrifices have a long history in Peru, dating back to before the arrival of the Spaniards in the 16th century. Many Indian people such as the Chaveng, Moshika, and Incas believe that sacrificing people, animals, and objects help them communicate with the gods. Summing up, we can say that the mummy from Peru is a window into the past, which helps us better understand the history and culture of our ancestors. And I assure you, we will return to this exciting discovery in future videos. In the meantime, you can write in the comments about which famous find of archaeologists you would like to hear in detail in the next video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so before, and now we'll continue. Jade Bowls 1980s Ecuador Adventure archaeologist Elias Hotemeyer ventures deep into the jungle inspired by tales of a mysterious underground city. The city was never found, but Elias discovered amazing glow-in-the-dark artifacts that are over 18,000 years old. And here they are, forgotten in the corner, 12 bowls in a goblet made with incredible precision from difficult-to-process jade. It's a miracle, right? But it becomes even more interesting. Each cup is a perfect copy of the other, and they all exactly repeat the volume of the cup. But what if in those ancient times in Ecuador there were ultra-technological stone processing machines? And another chair on top. Each cup and goblet depicts a different constellation. Just imagine what level of astronomical knowledge their creators needed. And all this could be connected with the legendary city of the Red Sun, which according to myth, was once here in Ecuador. Maybe our mysterious artifacts are all that is left of its inhabitants. Crocodile Stone And now we will go to the amazing mountains of Laos, where the ancient ruins of Wa Fu Temple are hidden. Among this temple, archaeologists found one very strange thing a huge boulder with a carving resembling a crocodile. But even more interesting is that this recess is the size of a man. Many people think that this stone was used as an altar for human sacrifices. If this is true, then such rituals could go back to the time of Chenla, the ancient empire that ruled these lands. According to legend, every year when the Frangipani paddles began to fall, King Chenla prayed to the spirits of the mountains and offered rice wine to two of the most beautiful girls. Then the girls were sacrificed to the gods. Such sacrifices are described in the 6th century history of the Sui. All this time, a community far from the big cities has preserved this story, which indicates its possible authenticity. However, it is not known what role Crocodile Rock played in these rituals. This unique carving makes it even more more mysterious. Nothing like this has been found in the ruins of Laos and Cambodia. And here is the question. If the crocodile rock was not used for sacrifices, then what was it for? New Geoglyphs of Nazca Using AI 
Our next story is about the coolest Nazca geoglyphs discovered with the help of artificial intelligence. This story begins in 2004. Scientists from Yamagata University under the command of Professor Makata Sakai decided to study these ancient ruins which are located in the Pampa Nazca, an area of more than 390 square kilometers. They used the most advanced technology you can imagine. Satellite imagery, aerial photography, 3D scanning from a special aircraft, and even even photos from drones. A huge number of technologies have come together to uncover the secrets of antiquity. Within a decade, scientists have managed to find 142 new drawings right in the desert, and all thanks to the latest technology. But then they ran into a problem – too much data for analysis. They have implemented machine learning to find data that has been missed in the past, sort of like an archaeological detective only with AI. In order not to miss a single geoglyph, in 2016, scientists used ultra-high-resolution aerial photography, 0.2 meters per pixel, and after that, they discovered even more of these mysterious drawings. But this is not the end. To speed up image analysis, scientists have applied AI deep learning and discovered four more new Nazca geoglyphs. Can you imagine? It's like finding new stars in the universe. And these new geoglyphs depict a human-like creature, a pair of huge legs, a fish, and a bird. Scientists say that their technique helps to detect what was previously impossible to see, and they believe it opens up a new era in research, a combination of fieldwork and AI. Oh, there are more discoveries ahead. The oldest river in the world Everyone knows about such rivers as the Nile and the Amazon, the longest and largest river in the world respectively, but do you know which river deserves the title of the oldest on Earth? The question is not simple, but most scientists are inclined to believe that this is the Australian Thinke River. Imagine, it is 350 to 400 million years old. This majestic current begins in the McDonnell Ranges and stretches for 600-750 kilometers, ending its journey in Lake Eyre. The most amazing thing thing is that this river kind of forgets to flow. It appears only a few times a year after heavy rains. It is very difficult to determine the age of the river. It is necessary to study the surrounding ecology, mountain ranges, sediments in river beds, and many other factors. Therefore, Thinkus age is only an approximate number. If you look to other parts of the world than in North America, the New River is considered the oldest river. It meanders for 547 kilometers from the Blue Ridge Mountains to West Virginia. Estimates of its age vary, but scientists agree that it is between 10 and 350 million years old. And in Europe, the oldest river is the Meuse. It stretches for 950 kilometers, crossing Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. And it is supposedly between 320 and 340 million years old. How the British took over India Today you have to go on a journey into the past to unravel one of the most exciting stories. The story of the conquest of India by the British Empire, its jewel in the crown. Oh, those were the times. Rivers of precious stones, tea and metals flowed here, which the British did not hesitate to send home to sell at a high price. And it all started in the middle of the 18th century and continued until the end of World War II. During this time, the British became incredibly rich and the poor Hindus became even poorer. Let's go back to 1757, when the Battle of Plassey took place, the key battle for control of India. The British were on one side of the barricades, the French on the other. Both sides were here for a reason. There were big financial interests in India and no one wanted to back down. So the British and French have long and actively tried to bribe the local rulers, but this time the British managed to play a trump card. They attracted Mir Jafar, the general of the Indian ruler, to their side, and he, having joined the British, did not even go into battle. The battle was amusing. The French, confident in their superiority, put on a show, not a battle. Instead of the promised 50,000 warriors and 10 elephants, only a tenth of the force entered the battle, and even then without enthusiasm. As a result, the British almost effortlessly took over, and the locals even went over to their side. After this sluggish battle, everything became clear. The British did not invest their money in vain. The capture of India was a matter of time. The country, like a prisoner, fell into the gentle embrace of the British for as much as two hundred years. This story left a deep mark in the history of India, which unfortunately is still felt today. Prominent Artifacts in the Trash 
I want to tell you an amazing story that can be called a real archaeological thriller. This is a story about how thanks to a scavenger, a unique collection of bronze statues was found in Tuscany, in sunny Italy. Scientists have searched for these treasures for a long time and in vain. Excavations began in 2019 next to the public bath in the village of San Cassiano dei Bani, but they led to almost nothing. And now, when hopes are almost lost, the scavenger Stefano Petrini comes to the rescue. He remembered the ancient Roman columns on the opposite side of the bath, which were visible only from the abandoned garden of his dead friend. Intuition told him exactly what to look for there, and oh miracle, the treasures were indeed there. Emmanuel Mariotti, the project's chief archaeologist, admitted he felt desperate before he received this irreplaceable clue. This led to the discovery of, of a sanctuary right in the heart of the ancient spa complex, a discovery that exceeded all expectations. There they found a treasure trove of statues as well as coins, sculptures of individual body parts, eggshells, pine cones, peach and plum pits, surgical instruments, and even a 2,000-year-old strand of curly hair. One of the most surprising finds is a bronze statue of a thin boy, depicting a young Roman with obvious bone disease. The inscription on the statue reads his name, Marcius Grabelo. Israel's oldest find Imagine you are swimming in the warm waters of Israel and suddenly stumble upon a shipwreck that is almost 2,000 years old. This is what happened to the divers who explored these waters, and now they are ready to share this amazing discovery with us. In the depth of forgotten centuries and sea waves, they discovered a multitude of colossal marble columns 1,800 years old. Incredibly, but these pillars of the past, 6 meters high and decorated with bizarre plant motifs, peacefully hid under the water along the coastline of Bat Yana near Netanya. But the first time the shipwreck became known thanks to Gideon Harisha, who noticed a ancient artifacts while sailing. He turned to the Israel Antiquities Authority and now together with them we can decipher the mysteries of history. But how did these columns end up at the bottom of the sea? The director of the Department of Underwater Archaeology at the office, Kobe Charvet, believes that the marble could have been brought from what is now Turkey or Greece for the construction of the grandiose building. However, the ship carrying this magnificent cargo fell into a storm which is why it couldn't deliver it to its destination. Our discovery not only gives us an idea of the greatest of the lost ship, which could hold up to 200 tons of cargo, but also helps to resolve disputes about how architectural works were created in the Roman period. Were they completely carved back in their homeland or was the processing completed upon arrival? Mystical Riddle I will tell you about one amazing geological mystery that happened on the island of Andron in the Indian Ocean. Andron is a volcanic island that was created when underwater tectonic plates parted and magma erupted. When it cooled down, basalt formed. This is what our island consists of. But something very strange is happening on Andron. What do you think can be found on a volcanic island? Usually, you will definitely not find quartzite there. It is a sedimentary rock similar to sandstone, which is formed from quartz sand in river deltas. A basalt island like Andron lacks quartz and is too young to have a river delta. But an amazing thing happens. Quartzite is continuously found on the island and its quantity is simply stunning. Geologists have found these strange stones from more than a hundred years ago. In 1900, scientists noticed unusual rocks similar to quartzite, but then the description was too scarce. In 1969, they discovered a large sandstone which turned out to be quartzite. History repeated itself in 2017 when a French geologist discovered even larger deposits of quartzite. A few years later, Cornelia class of Columbia University set out to solve the mystery. The most interesting thing is that the locals have known about these stones for a long time. They've been using them for decades to sharpen their knives. When scientists conducted research, the results were amazing. Quartzite literally took up half the mountain. The mystery has not yet been solved. As scientists suggest, a piece of quartzite from the continental crust could somehow end up in the ocean and rise 4,000 meters during a volcanic eruption. But there are no traces of quartzite on the basalt rocks of the island. As Klaas says, it's like seeing a wizard that shouldn't be there. In the future, scientists hope to solve this mystery by studying the age of quartzite. This will help to understand when and how it ended up on a volcanic island. Who scrolled this? 
In Spain, there was a discovery because of which the entire European archaeological society is going crazy from discussion. The thing is that in the small town of Ornatrellas, located in Cordoba, one of the residents presented the researchers with an ordinary, at first glance, fragment of an oil amphora. Amphoras and defines are a dime a dozen, but this one turned out to be special. This fragment, made about 1,800 years ago and measuring only 6 by 8 centimeters, initially did not arouse much interest. Some letters are scratched on it, but this is also a fairly common thing. In ancient times, everything was written on amphoras. However, the researchers decided to take a closer look at the inscription. Usually, information about the manufacturer, the quantity of goods, taxes, and so on was left on the amphoras. But nothing of the kind was found on this fragment. The inscription that was preserved on it read SV Abonium Glandum Aristapa QV Tisa Cuvit. Archaeologists made an assumption, and wow, it turned out to be a fragment of the famous poem Georgex by Virgil, written in 29 BC and dedicated to agriculture and rural life. But the most interesting thing is that the poem is scrolled on the very bottom edge of the amphora, where it was not at all expected to be seen. The author of this message from the past could be a skilled worker or even a child, since at that time, child labor was often used in factories. But one thing is clear for sure, the author was much more educated than most workers. Stonehenge in the Netherlands Archaeologists from Holland have discovered a treasure called the Stonehenge of the Netherlands. And this is not just some ordinary building, it is 4,000 years old. In the center of the Netherlands, in the city of Tiel, scientists have discovered a sanctuary among which mountain ditches are distinguished. Important artifacts have been found here – animal skeletons, human skulls, and even a bronze spearhead. The oldest of them date back to 2,500 BC. In just one mound, archaeologists found about 60 remains of men, women, and children, and 20 more in mounds in a nearby cemetery. Researchers think the sanctuary was planned so that sunlight would pass right through it during the longest and shortest days of the year. Stonehenge functioned exactly the same way. This solar calendar helped ancient people set important events such as religious holidays and harvest days. But the main sensation is in the oldest part of the mount. There they found the remains of a woman buried with a green coral glass bead. This is the oldest bead ever found in the Netherlands. The analysis showed that it came all the way from Mesopotamia, modern Iraq. This means that people here, more than 4,000 years ago, could contact people at a distance of up to 5,000 kilometers. The scientists spent six years excavating and analyzing the finds. In total, more than a million artifacts from different eras have been discovered, from the Stone Age to the Middle Ages. Some of them will soon be on display at the Thiel Museums and at the Dutch National Museum of Antiquities. Neanderthal Rock Paintings In the following story, scientists from France have found something unique. Perhaps these are the oldest cave paintings created by our distant ancestors, the Neanderthals. And these drawings are 75,000 years old. Can you imagine? And now, where it all started. Researchers from the University of Tours found strange marks in the cave of La Roche Cotard. These are not just scratches, these are unique patterns created by lines, dashes, and dots. To figure out who might have made them, the scientists used 3D modeling and compared them to similar footprints left by humans. So, they are sure that these are drawings from Neanderthals. The most interesting thing is that the entrance to this cave was closed about 57,000 years ago, excluding the possibility that these drawings were made by Homo sapiens. And the Neanderthal tools found there gave the last piece to the puzzle. What the creators wanted to say by this, we do not yet know. There are no images of animals or objects in the drawings. But this is additional evidence that Neanderthals were no less advanced than our ancestors. This cave is the oldest rock art cave in France, if not all of Europe. The find also adds to the list of clues that Neanderthals also made art, including 39,000-year-old drawings found in Gibraltar and 51,000-year-old deer-bone engravings iPhone spotted in painting 
What the researchers found next raises a lot of questions. I'm going to talk about a mysterious painting from the 19th century, which, according to rumors, depicts iPhone. It would seem nothing surprising, only the picture was painted in the 19th century and has an iPhone on it. The painting is called The Betrothal of Burns and Highland Mary. It depicts the famous Scottish poet Robert Burns and his beloved Mary Campbell. But here's what's interesting. In the hands of both characters, you can see a strange dark rectangle with rounded corners. This is what caused a wave of discussions on the internet. Indeed, in shape and size, this item is very similar to one of the first iPhones. But here's the catch, guys. The picture was painted in 1882, that is, 125 years before the first iPhone appeared. Now art lovers around the world are unraveling this mystery. Many speculate that it could be time travel. Others argue that it may simply be a prayer book, which in those days people often carried with them. In any case, we know one thing. People's love for riddles and secrets does not subside. And this is not the first picture where a smartphone was noticed. Consider Umberto Romano's 1937 painting Miss Pynchon and the Settling of Springfield. There was also an item that looked like a mobile phone. But what it really is, a mirror, a knife, a prayer book, or really a smartphone, is still not known for sure. In any case, this leaves room for your assumptions and fantasies. Write in the comments what you think. The messenger could have been easily executed. And now, let's go back to the distant past to find out how the messengers behaved in different countries. And the messengers, you know, they were a kind of postman of antiquity. Imagine no internet, no phones, how to quickly deliver an important message. This is where the messengers come into play. Let's start with Persia and Mesopotamia. There, for the messengers, to put it mildly, it wasn't sweet. If they brought unwanted news, the messenger could simply be beheaded because he spoiled the mood of the master. Pretty rough isn't it? But in ancient Greece, things were different. There, the messenger was a real hero. Imagine, even the winners of the Olympic Games could become messengers. They probably liked the wind in their hair and the admiring glances of those around them. In Greece, the messengers were most often foot soldiers. Horses were used, but rarely. Why? Because a strong warrior in light armor could outrun any horse over a long distance. Yes, in a short distance the horse was faster, but in a long distance the warrior always won. Therefore, the most enduring and athletic guys became messengers. Their task was simple. They had to run about 10 kilometers per hour and up to 90 kilometers per day. But this is already the maximum. Usually the messenger is covered from 20 to 30 kilometers per day. But the most famous messenger in history ran 40 kilometers from Marathon to Athens, announced victory and died of exhaustion. It was this distance of 40 kilometers that later became the official standard for marathon races. These were the messengers in antiquity, guys. In this age of the internet and smartphones, it's hard to imagine that people could run 90 kilometers a day to deliver important news. Bronze Age Burial Mount Our next story is special. Our current plans for building a residential complex on the outskirts of Harnham near Salisbury have been a little disturbed. But all for a good reason. Archaeologists have stumbled upon an ancient burial mound cemetery that is between 3.5 and, and 4,000 years old. Wiltshire is famous for its bronze mounds, but there was little information about similar places closer to Salisbury. The construction of the residential complex opened the gates to the past forest and discovered the remains of the Barrow Cemetery and its surroundings. These mounds according to scientists, were built during the Neolithic period. Their diameter varies from 10 to 50 meters and each has its own unique structure. The central burial, the embankment, the surrounding moat, all these elements form their uniqueness. Despite centuries of erosion, we found 10 burials and 3 piles of cremation ash. One of the mounds is notable for the group burial of adults and children. Such finds are rare. In some places, entire collections of deer antlers have been discovered, which in ancient times served as a valuable material for creating all kinds of tools and even ritual objects. But that's not all. Archaeologists have also found traces of life from the Saxon period. The remains of buildings, processed logs, fragments of pottery, iron knife blades, and even a site of a Bronze and Iron Age settlement consisting of more than 240 pits. So, the construction of a residential complex turned into a journey into the past. Every day, every discovery opens up new pages of history for us. Secrets of the Origin of Silver News story reveals for us the secrets of ancient trade. 
From the distant 2600 BC, the Bronze Age sends us its regards. That's the time when the ancient Greeks and Egyptians already knew what global trade was. Archaeologists from Australia, France and the US have explored silver objects from ancient Egypt and found out that the Greeks and Egyptians traded with each other much earlier and more actively than we thought. But there is no silver ore in Egypt. However, silver still got there and this began in the Bronze Age. Scientists have found that the source was not just the Greeks, but the Greeks from the islands of the Cyclades and Lavrian. So it looks like the ancient Egyptians went shopping all the way to Greece. Evidence of this trade was a silver bracelet, which as it turned out was the property of Queen Hetaphis I. That and other jewelry have been waiting in the wings for several decades in a museum in Boston. Scientists have used all their skill and modern methods of research to understand what the bracelet is made of, and their labors were crowned with success. They were able to determine that silver was mined on the Greek islands of the Aegean Sea. Interestingly, trade transactions in Egypt began to be recorded only in the Middle and New Kingdoms on papyrus, but there are a few documents left about the Old Kingdom. But even this did not become an obstacle on the the way to the truth for modern researchers. This ancient bracelet is a vivid example of how trade links united different civilizations and cultures and reminds us of humanity's undying interest in exchange and interaction. Did it all start that long ago? Lost Fawcett Greetings to all lovers of history and adventure. Today we delve into the fascinating story of Percy Fawcett, a man who became famous during his lifetime but only gained true recognition after his mysterious disappearance. This British explorer, traveler and topographer went missing in the Brazilian jungle while looking for a lost city. Percy inherited his love of travel from his father, a member of the Royal Geographical Society. He chose military service, worked in intelligence and studied topography, but from his youth he was fascinated by archaeology. Percy was convinced of the existence of mysterious ancient Atlantean cities in the jungle of Brazil. In 1925, based on ancient manuscripts and legends, Fawcett believed in the reality of the existence of an ancient city on the Mato Grosso Plateau. He was given the codename Zat. Percy, his eldest son Jack and friend Rayleigh Rymel went in search. Strange detail, Percy left a note asking not to send a search party if they disappeared. After the trio crossed the tributary of the Amazon, the Xanga River, nothing was heard of them. The most common version of the disappearance, an attack by cannibals. However, in 1932, Sprint brought new details. The missionary brought a story that an Indian woman told him. The men were captured by the Aravadu Indians, traveled from village to village until they were killed. Despite Percy's request not to search for him, several rescue expeditions were organized with various versions. Some claimed that they found Fossad in captivity, others said he was dead. Even a grave was discovered, but it turned out that the remains did not belong to Fawcett and his companions. The Indian tribes, accepting the blame for the death, spoke of killing him out of mercy as the men were sick. But no one could provide conclusive evidence. This gave rise to a new version. Fawcett founded a colony among the Indians and made his son the new white god. A small group of explorers believe that Percy found the lost cities of Atlantis, where he stayed. This story is full of secrets and unsolved mysteries that continue to worry us to this day. Graphite Phallus and now another story about the phallus, at this time graphite one. In northern Mongolia, at the archaeological site of Tolbor 21, scientists have discovered an artifact that is already 42,000 years old. And you know what? This is the oldest symbolic phallus in Eurasia. When Alexander Fedorshenko, a specialist in the study of traces of human activity, first saw the object under a microscope, he immediately realized that it looked like a phallus. But other scientists did not believe him at first. They thought that it was just an engraved stone. After doing research, they found that the item was broken and used as a pendant. An interesting fact, guys. The object is made of graphite, and the nearest deposit of this mineral is located at a distance of 100 kilometers from Tolbor 21. Here's a riddle for the detective of archaeology. But the most important thing is that now this is the oldest image of the phallus in Eurasia and the only phallic pendant in the world from the Paleolithic era, discovered in a layer of earth that is already 42,000 years old. Scientist Evgeny Rybin clarified that this discovery shows that already in those ancient times, gender signs, both male and female, played an important role in human symbolism. Mysterious Book of Thoth 
In the world of archaeology, discoveries happen from time to time that change our understanding of the past. Today's story is the discovery of the Book of Thoth, a stunning artifact that was found in the bowels of the Luxor Temple by the famous Egyptian archaeologist Hassan Mahmoud. Thoth, in ancient Egyptian mythology, is the god of writing, wisdom, and time. He is often depicted with the head of an ibis or as a baboon. It is believed that Thoth is a creator of hieroglyphs and numerous magical texts. The Book of Thoth is a scroll containing the prophecies and parables attributed to this god. The majestic scroll is made of high-quality papyrus and is extremely well-preserved despite many centuries, but the most important thing in it is the content. In the process of studying this scroll, Hassan Mahmoud discovered a mysterious message. He has knowledge hidden from the eyes. Whoever dares to read will gain the wisdom of the gods. This message seems to have been addressed to the king who owned the Luxor temple. This artifact is incredibly valuable for archaeologists and historians. It can shed light on ancient Egyptian ideas about the world, the gods, and also show how the ancient Egyptians interacted with these deities. The Book of Thoth is incredibly mystical. The opening of the scroll was a real revelation, because its content and message allowed us to look into the depth of ancient Egyptian mythology, to touch the wisdom of a great civilization whose history is still shrouded in secrets. Golden Diana the next story is about an amazing woman who was so beautiful and attractive that she captured the heart of the French king Henry II himself. Her name is Diane de Poitiers. Imagine, Diana was 20 years older than the king, but despite this, Henry was devoted to her for two decades. He literally carried her in his arms, gave gifts and built palaces. Even after his death and exile from the royal court, Diana retained her beauty and elegance, which many young court women could only envy. The woman carefully looked after herself. She wore a sun mask, ate right, devoted a lot of time to horseback riding and, of course, used all the possibilities of cosmetology of that time. And so, in 2009, scientists decided to penetrate the secret of Diane's beauty and analyze a strand of her hair. The results of the analysis were simply amazing. Scientists have found that the content of gold in the body of Diana was 250 times higher than normal. How did this happen? This can be partly explained by the fact that the aristocrats of that time often used gold in their daily lives. They ate from gold utensils, wore gold jewelry, and used cosmetics with gold. But there was something else. In the old archives, there are records of the golden drink that the Parisian alchemists made especially for Diana. This elixir of beauty and youth included gold foil, lemon juice, wine, and other ingredients that were supposed to act as a slow-acting poison. In the portraits of Diana, Diana, her skin looks white as porcelain, which is most likely the result of anemia due to the constant use of this beauty drink. But despite this, Diana not only retained her beauty, but also lived to be 67 years old, while the average life expectancy for women was only about 33 years. It seems that Diana had another secret that is still a mystery to modern science. So if you ever come across a golden drink, think twice before trying it how AI and archaeology can be connected. Today we will embark on an incredible journey where the past and the present merge into one. Artificial intelligence will help us on this adventure by presenting unique images that you will not find anywhere else except in this video. This is the most unique content. Our first stop is ancient Egypt. But not just in Egypt, but captivatingly reimagined. Imagine how graceful figures of pharaohs and their subjects plow the streets of modern Cairo, not in chariots, but in shining electric cars. The pyramids of Giza are no longer only wonders of the world, but also centers of solar energy. What about hieroglyphs? They have turned into QR codes, with which you can learn everything about the wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. Now let's move on to the Roman Empire. The Colosseum has become a huge shopping center, and instead of gladiator fights, it now hosts fashion shows. Romans dressed in elegant clothes are shopping, taxing each other in messengers. Aqueducts now serve not only as water supply, but also as beautiful backgrounds for selfies. 
The third point of our route is the Maya in the jungles of South America. Instead of small towns and villages, there are now giant skyscrapers and bustling shopping malls. But old knowledge is not forgotten. The ancient pyramids now serve as unique scientific laboratories and Mayan astronomical data is used for accurate navigation in the jungle. But we can go even further. Imagine what Greece would look like if it retained its philosophical traditions and adapted them to modern society. Plato's academy would become the world standard for artificial intelligence and Aristotle's Lyceum would become the leading university for space exploration. Or take ancient China. If Confucianism, Taoism and Buddhism met with technological advances, we might see monks meditating in robotic gardens or the Silk Road becoming a global map of hypersonic trains. These are the incredible possibilities of our journey through time. Artificial intelligence helps us explore these unique worlds where ancient and modern interact and enrich each other. But this is just the beginning. Who knows what other amazing combinations await us in the future? For now, it's just imagination. But thanks to science and technology, we might be able to see some of these things in real life. Write in the comments what you would like to see in the next video. I will try to recreate ancient and modern life in photographs for you. And in order not to miss this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell. Human Mummification Workshops and now we will find ourselves in Egypt, where two ancient workshops have recently been opened. What was produced there, you may ask? Mummies. So imagine, we are in Saqqara. This is a necropolis near Cairo. The researchers found two workshops, one for embalming people, the other for animals. The workshops are like a labyrinth of specialized rooms, each playing a different role in the mummification process. Here is the stone bed on which the body is laid. Here are the tools and materials for mummification. Fascinating, isn't it? Five such stone beds were found in the animal workshop, and in the workshop for people, these beds were much larger. You immediately imagine how these beds were used to lay the bodies of the dead. After organs were removed from the body, it was cleansed and filled with embalming fluids. Special wooden sticks store the embalming fluids, and clay pots kept the remains of salt and black resin inside. During the excavations, two more tombs were found. The first belonged to Eni Hasid Ba, the chief scribe and priest of the god Horus from the Old Kingdom who lived in 2400 BC. The second was for the 18th dynasty priest Manheba, who died around 1400 BC. The largest ship of the Middle Ages. Straight from Tallinn, the heart of the Estonian capital, comes the news that makes us rewrite the history of medieval sailings. Literally under the stone pavement of one of the central streets, a sunken ship was found. At first, archaeologists were sure that this was a cog, a small single-masted ship actively used by merchants of Hanseatic League in the 14th century. But what were the surprises there? It turned out that this ship is not just larger than an ordinary cog. This is a real giant, most likely descended from the Scandinavian shipyards, and its design is so unique that even experienced experts in maritime disasters cannot hide their surprise. Did you know that moss was commonly used to insulate the hull of ships in the Middle Ages? Well, on this ship, animal fur covered with resin was also added to the moss. This method was common in Scandinavia in contrast to the North German regions where typical cogs were built. And how do you like the fact that plank structures were found on the wreckage of the ship, which began to be widely used only a century after the estimated date of construction of this ship? There are more and more questions. The ship sank right in the center of the city, where Lutze Street now passes. Judging by the damage, its hull was facing the shore and was visible to all passers-by. At the time of discovery, the length of the ship was estimated at about 10 meters, but during further excavations, it increased to 20 meters. This makes it one of the largest medieval ships found in Europe. The highlight of this find was the things left on board the ship. Fruits, fish, and even more than 20 pairs of leather shoes, which have been perfectly preserved over the centuries. But what surprised archaeologists the most? Rats. Intact rats buried under the tar that leaked from burst barrels. Tutankhamun was not disabled. 
Today we have on our agenda one of the most mysterious pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Tutankhamun. Many of you have probably heard that Tutankhamun was a weak and sick boy who had difficulty moving due to bone diseases, but recent research and reconstruction of his face has led us to a startling discovery. That may not be the case at all. When archaeologists opened Tutankhamun's tomb, they found 130 sticks that they thought helped him move. But Egyptologists at the Cheltenham Science Festival are now arguing that this may have been an incorrect assumption. Imagine the so-called club foot could be the result of the mummification process itself. What we thought were signs of weakness could actually be distortions caused by resin and tight bandaging. Sophia Aces, a mummy researcher, is sure that in fact there is no evidence that Tutankhamun was disabled. Those sticks that were found on him could just be a symbol of his royalty. And although the mummy of Tutankhamun is missing one toe on his left foot, scientists suggest that it could have been lost in the process of moving the body or even taken as a souvenir. And these canes that were found on him were not assistants in movement, but status symbols. They depict his enemies, which gives us reason to think that Tutankhamun was not a wimp, but a battle-hardened warrior. Since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, scientists have continued to explore its contents and each time they make more and more new discoveries. Today, we know that Tutankhamun ascended the throne in 1336 BC when he was only 9 years old and died at 19. But he was not just a pharaoh, he was a warrior. Leather armor and weapons were found in his tomb, which confirms this fact. And how many more such discoveries await us, we can only guess. Increasingly, archaeologists are studying the same find again and it turns out that the previous conclusions were completely false. Until that time, many films and cartoons were shot in which Tutankhamun was depicted as a disabled person. But what now? Is it worth trusting archaeologists after that? Write your opinion in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Genetic Discs Imagine, we started using microscopes only a couple of centuries ago and genetics only 150 years ago. And then boom, they find a 6,000-year-old stone disk in South America which depicts scenes of a microscopic level. Well, how can this be explained? This disk, known as the genetic disk, is respected in archaeological circles as a true relic. It is made of lidite, a hard basalt rock, weighs about 2 kilograms and has a diameter of 22 centimeters. But the real shock is the symbols that are depicted on it. Hear me out. Sperm, eggs, fertilization and stages of fetal development. All this is drawn in chronological order. And if you turn the disc over, you can see the moments of cell division and even the development of amphibians. Don't be scared. Even the archaeologists are shocked. Now think. Such a disc was found in Colombia among 6,000-year-old artifacts, but at the same time, it does not at all look like objects of the pre-Columbian era and the symbols on it are unknown. Maybe it's even older. How could an ancient civilization create something like this and know what we have only learned in the last couple of centuries? It is such a mysterious object that some have even suggested that it was created by the serpent people. Well, there really is a snake on the disc. This disc calls into question our entire system of understanding the culture of South America. Some consider it a fake, but we know that South America is full of secrets. Jagged Stones in Southern California, amazing artifacts have been found that resemble bronze gears that were previously discovered in Peru. These stone gears, known as California cook stones, are 2 to 6 inches in diameter and up to 2 inches thick. Scholars believe they were made sometime between 6,000 and 3,500 BC. Looking at these artifacts with modern eyes, they may seem primitive. But these stones have different characteristics such as cups, round gouges and serrations along the edges, and cupcake-like patterns. It's amazing, but about 15% of them have a hole in the center, often narrow on one side. Also, scientists discovered a curious anomaly. In the middle is a perfectly square hole, which even with modern technology would be difficult to reproduce. This suggests that their ancient creators were familiar with advanced technology. The purpose of these stone discs is still a mystery. Some suggest they were used for some ritual purposes, but who created these stones and why? The question remains open. The prevailing opinion today is that these gears were used as ceremonial objects, but their meaning and symbolism are still a subject to discussion. Artifact of an Unknown Civilization 
How about a journey into the past where archaeological finds cast doubt on everything we know about our history? It all started in February 1961. Three adventurers, Wallace Lane, Virginia Maxey, and Mike Mikesell, set up on a hike up Mount Coso to enrich their collection of antiquities. Imagine their surprise when, among ordinary rocks, they found a stone that simply could not be there. A day later, Michael decided to work on the stone and discovered something incredible. Inside the stone there was a ceramic cylinder, and inside the cylinder there was a metal rod, which for some reason reacted to a magnet. And inside, fragments of fossilized shells and pebbles were found. The friends showed the find to a geologist they knew, who after a detailed examination said, this stone, in his opinion, is at least 500,000 years old. Can you imagine half a million years? If so, then our discovery rewrites the entire history of human development. After all, how to explain the metal elements inside such an ancient stone? Unfortunately, we do not have a detailed description of this study as well as the name of the geologist. But one thing we know for sure, the stone was studied by creationist Ron Cowell. He took an x-ray and discovered that the rod had a spring. So maybe it was some ancient electrical mechanism, but who created it and why? Race of Giants Let's dive into the mysteries of the past. Once upon a time, about 5,000 years ago, quite real giants walked on the lands of China. Their height could reach up to 2 meters, which for those times was just an astronomical figure. You may wonder, where did such a gigantic height come from in those distant times? Scientists believe it's all about the rich food. Some huge people, just like in fantasy novels, lived in Shandong province. Their living conditions could be called quite comfortable for their time. There was access to a variety of food, houses had bedrooms and other amenities. Since 2016, researchers have been excavated near Jinan, and the giants were not the only amazing discovery. Previously, they found the ruins of buildings, many burials, and even sacrificial pits. Interestingly, the giants were most likely part of the Neolithic culture of Longshan. This is a transitional period from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age when copper tools began to be used. An interesting feature of the culture is vessels with triple lacks, possibly associated with the development of cattle breeding. On the world in fresco. We will travel to Italy, where scientists have used supernova technology to look behind the curtain of an ancient Etruscan frescoes. In laboratories, scientists using special equipment scan paintings in different angles of light. This is called the multi-elimination hyperspectral extraction, or simply MHX. It sounds complicated, but it's actually just an upgraded version of our normal vision. Hidden details have been revealed in these ancient pictures. They were so well hidden that we didn't even know they existed. One of the most amazing discoveries happened in the Tomb of the Monkey. On one of the frescoes, details of the underworld surfaced with stones and trees surrounding the reservoirs. The protagonist of this story is not a monkey at all, but a long disappeared man carrying some kind of object. Can you imagine? All these years, the guy has been hiding in plain sight, we just couldn't see him. Such discoveries overturn our understanding of the past and make us wonder how many more hidden heroes in ancient frescoes are waiting in the wings to reappear in front of us. Thanks to the courage of archaeologists who are not afraid to resist the opinion of the majority, we can observe these mysterious finds. Mausoleum of the Ancient Roman Era Let's go on a virtual journey to the center of London, where archaeologists have stumbled upon a unique find, a mausoleum from the era of the Roman Empire and in excellent condition. Imagine, in the heart of modern London, in the Southwark area, scientists have discovered a Roman mausoleum that walls and floors of which are surprisingly well preserved. During the time when Britain was a Roman colony, this place most likely served as a last refuge for the wealthy inhabitants of Londinium and after the restoration, we will be able to see it as a permanent exhibition. All this action took place under the strict guidance of specialists from the London Archaeological Museum. And the most interesting thing is that this is not just another mausoleum, this is the best preserved Roman mausoleum with a unique mosaic floor and traces of steps. The most incredible thing is that under the first mosaic floor, archaeologists discovered another one with a similar pattern. Perhaps at one time they decided to renovate or even rebuild the mausoleum. It seems to have in quite an imposing building, perhaps even two-story. Such that just in the tomb, strange, but they did not find sarcophagi. But more than a hundred coins, fragments of ceramics, tiles and metal were found. And also, in the same area in 2022, a giant mosaic was discovered, the largest in the last 50 years. Now researchers are using 
3D modeling to determine the exact age of the mausoleum and perhaps even find out who was its owner. Flute with Hawk Voice Now let's go to Israel, to the site of the ancient settlement of Ein Mala. Here, under a layer of earth older than 12,000 years, seven unique flutes made from thin bird bones were discovered. Imagine, these souls were created by our ancestors from the bones of birds of prey. Moreover, scientists are sure that the choice of bones and the location of the holes in them are not accidental. With their help, you can extract sounds very similar to the cries of birds of prey. According to researchers, these flutes were not musical instruments, but were used for hunting. Ein Mala is an ancient settlement of the Natufians, the first hunter-gatherers who decided to settle in one place but did not give up hunting, fishing, and collecting fruits and plants. And they even learned to engage in agriculture and cattle breeding. In Mala is a near Hula Lake where migratory birds stopped to rest. Based on the finds, local residents actively hunted waterfowl wintering on the lake. These flutes had from one to four holes, which, like in modern flutes, were clamped with fingers. Some even had a mouthpiece, and around the holes, there are a lot of scratches and marks proving that the tools were actively used. The researchers conducted an experiment and made the same flutes from dog bones. The sounds they made turned out to be very similar to the cries of birds of prey. Castrel and Sparrow Hawk. Presumably, with the help of these sounds, hunters attracted birds and then used their claws and feathers for decorations. Ancient Leather Boot the next find was found in Kent, UK. An incredible discovery has been made here. Part of a 3,000-year-old leather boot, possibly the oldest shoe ever found in British soil. Why by accident on the beach, a local archaeologist stumbled upon this shoe. He could not even imagine that this is a real treasure of the Bronze Age. To confirm his assumption, he sent the find to Scotland for radiocarbon analysis. After that, he got the answer from them that the shoe is really from the late Bronze Age. As the archaeologist just said, this is a real rarity, because textiles rarely survive thousands of years. Another interesting detail, our find is the smallest Bronze Age shoe in the world. The sole is only 7 centimeters. According to scientists, this shoe was worn by a toddler aged 2-3 years. Now researchers are trying to establish what animal skin the shoes were made from, and after all the scientific research, it will go to the British Museum. Did you know that up to this point the oldest shoe in the UK was considered a 2,000-year-old find from the Somerset Quarry? However, now we have a new record holder. The Mystery of the Invention of One Device this is the story of Samuel Morse and his amazing Morse code, which is a unique code of dots and dashes. Morse was not just an inventor. There was a period in his life when he was a famous portrait painter, creating masterpieces and making money on portraits of influential personalities. Through this, he saved up enough money to marry the woman he loved, Lucretia Walker, and they had three wonderful children. But life has prepared for him a severe test. In 1825, while in Washington, Samuel received a letter from his father. Letters stated that Lucretia had suffered a heart attack. Samuel raced home to New Haven, but it was too late. Lucretia was buried before his arrival. This tragedy made him think. What if the latter was delivered not by a courier who traveled for several days, but by a technical device that would be much faster? Maybe then he would have had time to say the last story to his beloved. From that moment on, painting faded into the background and Morse plunged into the study of ways to quickly transmit information over a distance. So, after many years of hard work, the world saw the Morse electromagnetic telegraph and its unique alphabet consisting of dots and dashes. Morse code is not commonly used today. However, sailors, radio amateurs, and history buffs still use it. And while it may seem a bit out of date now, the impact it has had on technology and society has been incredibly important. Monster Remains Researchers battling brutal Antarctic conditions for decades have discovered the fossilized remains of an Elasmosaurus. These were the real titans of the Cretaceous period who lived with dinosaurs. 
Scientists have discovered most of the skeleton of this giant, though there was no head, but even without it, they concluded this beast weighed from 11.8 to 14.8 tons and was about 12 meters long. Can you imagine? For comparison, earlier they found Elasmosaurus weighing about 5 tons and the genus Aristonectes up to 11 tons. However, until the end, scientists are not sure which genus our giant belongs to. Perhaps it is an unknown genus. And here's something else that's interesting. This marine giant lived about 30 years before the extinction of the dinosaurs, which supports the theory that Elasmosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period. Lakes under the ice in total, more than 400 subglacial lakes have already been found in Antarctica, and each of them has been isolated from the rest of the world and the atmosphere for millions of years. And this means that life there can be completely unique and ancient. Scientists have already drilled two small lakes and discovered microbial life. But what happens in the big lakes remains a mystery. After all, there is no sunlight, so microbes cannot use photosynthesis. In order for life to be more diverse, the water in the lake must move so that nutrients and oxygen are evenly distributed. On the surface of the Earth, this is done by the wind and the sun. Under the ice, geothermal heat rising from the Earth's interior can serve as a source of heat and movement. This heat is able to create currents in subglacial lakes, stirring up the water and making it more hospitable to life. Icefish Colony A group of scientists broke through a thick layer of ice and lowered the camera half a kilometer down. They saw tens of thousands of round nests, each of the diameter of a bicycle wheel, and in each nest lives one adult fish, guarding more than 2,000 of their future children. Cameras filled more than 12,000 of these fish. The total spawning area is about 240 square kilometers. These fish are called ice fish because of their unique ability to endure extreme cold. Their blood contains special substances similar to antifreeze, which allows them to live in the harsh conditions of Antarctica. As you can see, despite the cold, life in Antarctica is in full swing. Pyramids a group of researchers have discovered in Antarctica none other than three pyramids, and it seems that they were created not by nature, but by the hands of our distant ancestors. Antarctica is now the edge of the world covered in ice, but once it was an oasis full of life where even dinosaurs walked, and our finds there are proof of this. In total, eight researchers from America and Europe went on the expedition. They found two pyramids 16 kilometers from the coast and the third right by the water. The question arises, why don't we hear about it in the news? Many argue that this information is hidden so that we are not distracted from the usual idea of the past. What will we see when the glaciers melt? Could it be that under the ice, in addition to the pyramids, another sphinx is hiding? What do you think about it? Write your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Mummified Penguins Chinese researchers have discovered a graveyard of mummified penguins in Antarctica, and many of them were, were just chicks. At first, scientists thought that the penguins did not survive two periods of extreme rainfall, but penguins live in Antarctica and are used to cold and snow, so something doesn't quite fit here. Now, scientists are suggesting that climate change is to blame for these massive penguin death. In their opinion, the humidification of the climate caused by global warming could have led to this tragedy. The penguins, as it turned out, were not ready for such conditions and immediately died. This happened twice, about 750 and 200 years ago. Scientists figure this out using radiocarbon dating, and it seems that the penguins did not die immediately, but gradually. Ancient Egg this stone potato measures 20 by 30 centimeters and has been lying in the frozen earth for, wow, 68 million years. That is, its time is the time of the dinosaurs. This object was fraught with many mysteries and it was simply called this thing. But one day, a researcher suggested that it could be the egg of the ancient creature. It would seem nonsense, an egg without bones inside and such a gigantic size? It was a Mosasaurus egg, a terrible sea monster 17 meters long and weighing about 15 tons. Scientists came to this conclusion when they discovered the skeletons of small mosasaurs nearby. This egg was unusual. It was more like a giant plastic bag that the cups could easily tear. Underwater, it was deformed and petrified, so the egg turned out so unusual. Huge Crater 
Researchers in Antarctica have discovered a huge crater, and most likely it was left by an asteroid. And who knows, maybe it was this cosmic collision that influenced the evolution of dinosaurs. Scientists believe that the effect of an asteroid in Antarctica was even cooler than the one that destroyed the dinosaurs. This may have led to the catastrophic destruction of the time. The disaster took many lives, but as it turned out, it not only took away but also gave. This crater, over 300 miles wide, was created by a huge asteroid about 250 million years ago. Scientists think that it was this fall of an asteroid that could become one of the reasons for the global extinction of species on Earth. But at the same time, this catastrophe could create the conditions for the appearance of dinosaurs. As a result of this horror, one of the winners was the Archosaurus, the progenitor of dinosaurs. UFO sighting in 1965, at the Argentine naval base in Antarctica, in the middle of the night, almost 20 people looked up at the sky in surprise. At an altitude of 15 to 20 kilometers, they saw a UFO. This mysterious object was a glowing kaleidoscope of greens, reds, yellows, oranges, and white. The huge ship, more than 85 meters long, seemed heavy and soared confidently in the sky. There were many witnesses to this event, since it all lasted a long time. Even earlier, in 1946, the American high jump expedition set off to the icy shores. There is a legend that flying saucers met them on the way, and they say that about 400 sailors and soldiers died in battles with them. The entire expedition ended after three months, and all materials became strictly secret. Richard Byrd, the head of the expedition, told about this and ended up in a psychiatric hospital. Mysterious Cave Scientists, through Google Maps in Antarctica, discovered a mysterious object. It's not just an object, it's a cave hidden under glaciers. Scientists have published a video on YouTube showing the vault of this cave. Some believe that the cave could have been man-made. This video, the video shows an ideal vault, 23 meters high and 76 meters wide. Scientists drew attention to the strange path and steps at the entrance to the cave, which gives reason to think about their artificial origin. Others think Think it's a secret UFO facility or a top-secret military base. There are those who think that these are the remains of the architecture of an ancient civilization. Official science is still silent, but everyone agrees, with global warming, Antarctica has many more secrets to discover. Elongated Skulls Archaeologists have made a stunning discovery in Antarctica the remains of people with long skulls. Even more interesting, similar elongated skulls have been found all over the world, in Peru, Egypt, Russia, the USA, and even in Europe. Scientists have found that people deliberately deformed the skulls of their children right from birth. But here's the mystery. It was done by different people who lived at great distances from each other, perhaps even without mutual contact. And the question why remains open. Maybe this is how people tried to get superpowers or emphasize their status, or wanted to be like the gods. Maybe it was a trend, like tattoos or piercings today. It's creepy, but even today in some tribes of South America, this tradition still exists. Ruins of Ancient Civilizations Captain Robert Scott and his crew come face to face with an ancient civilization behind the ice wall of Antarctica. They found traces of antediluvian time and even filled them. Can you imagine what is it like to see the ruins of ancient city, pyramids, columns, and statues in the heart of Antarctica? This ancient civilization may even be older than the ones we learn about in school. Confirmation of this is a map of 1531, where Antarctica is shown without ice. Strange, because according to our history, Antarctica was discovered only in 1820 by Russian explorers. Did you know that the North and South Poles have reversed 171 times in the last 76 million years? And the last time it happened was about 12,000 years ago. This explains why all the secrets of Antarctica today are hidden under a kilometer meter layer of ice. According to recent reports, under Antarctica, there was a huge network of passages and tunnels at a depth of 4 kilometers. Gold Spewing Volcano Mount Erebus, the largest volcano in Antarctica, literally spits the finest crystals of metallic gold into the air. Gold from 0.1 to 20 micrometers is found in volcanic gases and up to 60 micrometers in the snow nearby. 
Interestingly, although other volcanoes are known for their gold emissions, Mount Erebus is the only one that ejects gold in metallic form. Before you decide to go gold prospecting in Antarctica, let me disappoint you. Mount Erebus only releases about 80 grams of gold per day. It's more of a geological curiosity than anything else. However, knowing how volcanoes can concentrate the metal could help geologists find gold deposits better. Martian Connection This mineral was first discovered by the Opportunity rover on Mars in 2004. The mineral gerocide, which has been known on Earth since 1872, was considered ours, earthly. It requires water, iron, sulfate, potassium, and acidity to form. Everything found on Earth but rare on Mars. However, it turned out that there is much more gerocide on Mars than here. So the question arose, how could it be formed there in such a large amount? The particles found on Earth were cracked and lacked sharp edges, suggesting they formed and broke apart inside the ice. And here comes the most interesting part. Scientists suggest that on Mars, gerocide is formed in the same way. Life under ice While collecting samples under the ice shelf, scientists discovered living organisms under a layer of ice over 900 meters. When the scientists lowered the camera down into the icy abyss, they found nothing but one stone. But to their surprise, living creatures were found on this stone. Different types of sea sponges and strange filamentous organisms, which they assumed were hydroids, a type of intervertebrate. Just imagine this, life under hundreds of meters of ice in conditions that we assumed were completely incompatible with life. But here they are, these little creatures, questioning everything we know about life on Earth. We can only guess how long these organisms have been here and how often they feed. Once a year, once a decade, or maybe once a century. This ecosystem can be incredibly ancient. Antarctic sponges, for example, can live for thousands of years. Expedition of Admiral Byrd it all started with books written by Amadeo Giannini and Raymond Bernard discussing the unusual theory that the Earth is actually hollow. They claimed that Bird, during his expeditions, did not just fly through the poles, but fell into giant cavities inside the planet. Ufologist Ray Palmer further fueled interest in this theory by presenting it in his UFO magazine. He caused a real storm of discussion. Janini, Bernard, and Palmer claimed that Bird claimed to have penetrated 3,700 kilometers into the Earth through the South Pole, and before his death, he even hinted at the existence of a magical continent in the sky, the edge of eternal mystery beyond the poles. Land of rains and rainbows, home of mythical lost civilization. These references confirm their version. The Earth is shaped like a donut, with huge depressions at the poles inside of which there are uncharted lands and perhaps even secret UFO bases. Global warming is just beginning to reveal the mysteries of the icy continent. With the melting of glaciers, more and more mystical finds will be discovered. It seemed that history could not be rewritten, but what would happen if the search movement began in full force? Ancient Sword in Perfect Condition Archaeologists have found a real bronze sword in the waters of the Danube River, a sword that is already about 3,000 years old. At first, scientists thought it was a fake, but after checking the sword, they were amazed. This is a real ancient sword. And best of all, it's in perfect condition. Let's imagine, 3,000 years ago, different tribes lived in Germany. People lived in wooden houses near the rivers, were engaged in agriculture, hunting, and waging wars was common. And in one of these wars, this sword was lost. The sword was found near the town of Nördlingen, in a grave where three people lay. It seems that it was a family, a man, a woman, and a little boy. They were buried with other bronze objects, but the sword turned out to be the most surprising among them. Scholars estimate that this sword was made at the end of the 14th century BC, and it was not a simple sword, but a skillfully crafted sword with an octagonal hilt and a wide blade. Do you know what swords were made of in the Bronze Age? That's right, bronze. And here's why it was cool. Firstly, bronze does not rust. Secondly, it is easy to mold. And thirdly, bronze swords were very durable at least until blacksmiths started using iron. Therefore, iron eventually replaced bronze. Iron was stronger, iron ore was easier to find, and an iron sword could be made even sharper. And so, thanks to iron, swords became even stronger, sharper, and cheaper. But we were lucky that the sword was made of bronze, otherwise we would not have seen it today. 
luxurious artifacts in China. Get ready for a magical journey back in the time to the Shen Dynasty, which flourished in China from 1600 to 1046 BC. This state is not just invented but confirmed by finds and even records of that time, and it seems that we have just been lucky to open new tempting pages of this story. Recently, the National Cultural Heritage Administration of China presented fresh archaeological discoveries that literally turned our understanding of the Shan Dynasty upside down. And all thanks to excavations in the Shan province, where Zhegu is located, a place shown with ancient treasures, the leader among all places associated with the Shans. Feel the ground grandeur of this place, giant earthworks, tombs, furnaces and ruins, all this is spread over 11 neighboring hills. Here is the true golden heart of the Shan dynasty, and here are our main characters, nine collections of graves of noble people, including three groups of large tombs that fit into the shape of the Chinese character Jie. It sort of removes all questions and secures the status of the main cemetery of the Shan dynasty for Zhegu. But wait, there are even more amazing finds, remains of chariots and skeletons of horses. This is incredibly important for the study of the origin of chariots in China and the customs of their burial. But that's not all. Numerous jade artifacts, bone tools, oracle bones and even utensils. And most importantly, the discovery of the central settlement and large tombs confirms the highly developed bronze civilization in the north of Shaanxi during the late Shan Dynasty, which turned our ideas about that time upside down. All these discoveries help us better understand the structure of the states of that time, cultural exchanges and interactions between different areas. Afraid to touch it Imagine that you are sorting through your family's old things and suddenly find a book that was taken from the library back in 1927. This is what happened to Jim Perry from California when he opened a box with the belongings of his dad wife. In the midst of all this junk, Jim found a book called A History of the United States by Benson Lossing. The book looked old, but when he saw the St. Helena library stamp and the issue date of 1927, he was amazed. He thought that his father-in-law, John McCormick, took the book and did not return it. 96 years have passed since then. Under the old library rules, the late fee was only 5 cents a day, but over that time, the amount has increased to an astronomical $1,756. But don't worry, in 2019, the library eliminated late fees so Jim didn't have to shell out. Instead, he returned the book to the library where it can now be seen in a glass case near the entrance. Chris Creighton, the library director who has been there for over 30 years, said it was the oldest book she had ever seen. I was afraid to touch it, she admitted. The book was falling apart, she said. History is literally all around us. Next time you're sorting through old stuff, take a closer look. Who knows what you might find? Stone Phallus in Spain Get ready for a fascinating story about how archaeologists in Spain discovered a secret item of warriors of the past which at first surprised researchers. I'm talking about a stone penis that turned out to be a grindstone. Archaeologists were at the excavations near the Mira Tower in the city of Rio de Vigo. This tower was demolished in 1476 during the Ermandina Rebellion when the peasants rebelled against the Spanish aristocracy. But here's the interesting thing. They came across a stone 15 centimeters long, which as I said was in the shape of a penis. In general, such a phallic image is often found in prehistoric symbolism, but is rarely found in artifacts of the Middle Ages, so the researchers were surprised. And then, it turns out that this stone is not just a stone, it was a grindstone used to sharpen weapons before battles during the Ermandina uprising. After all, not only modern people love everything stylish and with humor, our ancestors were also not without a sense of humor. The researchers note that the stone reflects a symbolic connection between violence, weapons and masculinity. Message Balls a mystery that is scattered all over the world, mysterious message balls. They are everywhere, but especially love Costa Rica. They are composed of lava and sedimentary rocks, but come across where there was no lava at all. Scientists believe that their approximate age is 12, 14,000 years. They are perfectly round and weigh up to 14 tons. If you see a drawing or an inscription on one of them, do not be surprised. This could have been left by our distant ancestors. These spheres have been seen in many parts of the world, from America to Russia. They were first discovered in Costa Rica when the company was preparing 
Caribbean land for banana plantations. But where did they come from? There are those who are sure that they are the work of an ancient civilization. Others believe they are created by aliens. There are those who say that these are just natural formations created by river flows or retreating glaciers. Another theory is that these balls were made in the 20th century as a tourist attraction, but then the war began and they were forgotten. And the last hypothesis that I want to share with you is that if you look at these balls from above, they form geometric shapes like star maps. Moreover, each ball can represent a star or a planet. So maybe this is our message to space. Skull of Destiny these crystal masterpieces appeared long before the beginning of civilization and are amazingly accurately carved without a single fracture. And despite all the achievements of the 21st century, we are still far from such accuracy. Only primitive tools were used to create these skulls. Scientists have always been attracted to the history of the ancient Maya civilization. They lived 1,500 years ago and were amazingly advanced for their time. In 1930, during excavations in the Mayan city of Labantim, one of these crystal skulls was found. It was discovered by archaeologist Frederick Mitchell Hedges. This find challenged scientists. How could the Mayans create a skull of such precision using only primitive tools? This question remains open today. But our secrets continue. In Belize, human remains and jugs about 14,000 years old were found. But how did the ancient Asian even end up in America? This remains a mystery that we have yet to unravel, as does the true reason for the creation of the crystal skulls. It was buried with a woman. Today we have something special for you, an amazing archaeological find straight from the heart of China. Imagine that archaeologists have dug up a very old and elaborate horse saddle. This is possibly the oldest saddle ever found. This find was discovered in the distant Xinjiang Yuga Autonomous Region of China in the area Turfan Basin. It was in a woman's grave in Yanhai Cemetery. She was probably a rider because there was a saddle underneath her as if she was sitting on it. The saddle stayed there unscathed for about 2,700 years thanks to the dry desert climate. It was made from two cowhide cushions filled with a mixture of straw, deer and camel hair. Even for us living in the 21st century, that sounds pretty comfortable, doesn't it? Analysis showed that the saddle was made sometime between 724 and 396 BC, making it possibly the oldest saddle in history. This is important because we used to think that the first saddles were made by the Scythians, nomadic people who lived in the Eurasian steppes. An archaeologist from the University of Zurich, Patrick Bertman, said the discovery could push back the start of saddle manufacturing history. It is possible that the woman they found wearing the saddle belonged to the Subeishi culture that lived in the region about 3,000 years ago. We now know that domestic horses appeared about 6,000 years ago, but at first they were used for milk and meat. Horseback riding, as we know it today, probably only started 1,000 years after that. The first riders used simple rugs that were tied to the horse's back, as shown in Assyrian reliefs. And the oldest real saddle that we know could have been created in Central Asia around the middle of the first millennium BC. Researchers suggest that the Sabatia culture may have had contact with the Scythians as they had similar weapons and clothing. While the Scythians were nomads, the Sabaci people most likely engaged in pastoralism in the turf and bazing. He knew about the existence of women only from books. This episode will focus on an incredible story that seems to have come straight from the pages of legend. This story begins back in 1938 with a news article in the Edinburgh Daily Courier. Don't worry, it's related to archaeology. The article read, A monk who has never seen a woman has died in Greece. Imagine a monk named Michael Tholotus who spent his entire life in a monastery on the majestic Mount Athos. He was born in 1856 and immediately after his birth, his mother died and no one knew his father. The little orphan was left on the threshold of an Orthodox church where he was found and raised by monks. The laws of Mount Athos where he lived were strict. Women were not allowed there. And so it happened that Michael spent his whole life not seeing women. His knowledge of them was based only on the stories of other monks and books. The ban on visiting Mount Athos by women and domestic animals such as cows or sheep has been in effect since the 10th century and still exists. It is associated with the vow of celibacy given by the monks of Athos. 
But not only women were not seen by Michael Tholotis, he also never saw cars, planes or even movie theaters. After all, he did not leave the monastery all his life. Death overtook him in 1938 at the age of 82, and he was buried with great honors as the only man who had never seen a woman. Now Mount Athos is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, visited by thousands of tourists every year, but women are still banned from entering, sparking controversy and accusations of discrimination. There are 20 monasteries on the mountain where about 2,000 Orthodox monks from all over the world live. 17 of these monasteries belong to the Greeks and the rest to the Serbs, Bulgarians and Russians. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? Flooded Old Church This is a special story that will take you back to the 16th century, straight to Mexico. At the side of the reservoir, now you can see the whole Catholic church. Incredible, isn't it? The water level in the Nezawa Coyotl Reservoir has plummeted due to drought, and now, after 60 years of being underwater, the ancient temple of Santiago, also known as the Temple of Quechua, has resurfaced. And the most interesting thing is that now you can reach it by car. This temple was dependent on the monastery of Tagpatan, founded in 1564. But around the temple it became empty when people left these places because of the terrible plague in 1773-1776. However, travelers and believers continued to visit it until the 19th century because it was located on the Royal Highway, built by the Spanish conquistadors. Centuries later, in 1966, when creating a reservoir, the temple was flooded. But even after that, unique arches, ornaments and even handmade bricks remained intact in it. A few months ago, the temple began to gradually emerge and people were able to to visit it by boat. But now the water level has become even lower and the temple has completely appeared on land. And now tourists can get to it by car or even walk, which they already do, because such an opportunity does not come up very often. Fossils of Giant Sea Creatures and now let's take a trip to the North Island of New Zealand, where unique prehistoric remains have recently been discovered. And all this due to the elements that we know as the Cyclone Gabriel. It raged a lot here, washing away a thick layer of mud and sand from stones and boulders, and discovered these ancient finds. Among these treasures were two fossilized vertebrae that, according to paleontologists, could belong to Elasmosaurus. This is a giant marine reptile with a long neck, which at one time could reach a length of 14 meters. A vertebrae was also found that may have belonged to a Mosasaurus, another huge marine reptile that was considered the supreme predator in the oceans of the dinosaur era. Cyclone Gabriel left behind a sad story. It was the deadliest cyclone since 1968, killing 11 people. But with all its destructive power, it also revealed to us the secrets of the past taken from the depth of mountain streams and rivers. In the zone of its action lies the forest of Monga Teneiva, which is considered a storehouse of the Cretaceous period. Here, in 1975, the first dinosaur was discovered. If there is a place that can be called the epicenter of New Zealand paleontology, it is undoubtedly Monatnaiva, and especially the Manahuana stream. The oldest painting. In Iceland, archaeologists have discovered a stone carved with a Viking ship. And the most amazing thing about this is that it may be the oldest image in the history of Iceland. It is worth saying that although carved ships are found in Scandinavian culture, such discovery in Iceland is the first of its kind. According to archaeologist Bjarni Einarsson, this could be the first illustration in the history of the country. Work on the store excavation site began in 2015. Archaeologists return here every summer to continue their work. At first, the researchers drew attention to the long house of the settlement era, but this only opened the doors for them to the rich history of this place. What about the fact that 92 beads and 29 silver objects were found in this long house, including coins from Rome and the Middle East? An even older long house was found here, which archaeologists estimate was built around 800 AD. This is 75 years before Iceland became permanently populated. No remains of domestic animals were found inside it, which suggests its special purpose. Bjarni Einarsson suggests that this could have been a seasonal hunting base from where the Vikings went in search of valuable resources, including walrus bone. Temperature What is obvious to one is far from obvious to others. Knowing this wisdom, archaeologists and scientists made a joint study of the pyramids. Scientists have discovered an unusual thermal anomaly in one famous building, the Great Pyramid of Cheops. Imagine, in the pyramid they found a place of several stone blocks that were hotter by as much as 6 degrees than the rest. 
This amazing discovery was made by scanning the pyramid with the latest technological advances, including infrared thermography, muon radiography, and 3D reconstruction. Such temperature differences may indicate the presence of cavities or different materials inside the pyramid. It was previously believed that all the stones in the lower row of the Cheops pyramid are the same. However, thermal anomalies were also found in the upper half of the tomb. According to scientists, most likely, there are empty areas inside the pyramid. Experts are now looking for them. Perhaps there are new discoveries is awaiting for them. But what exactly is hiding behind this thermal anomaly in the Pyramid of Cheops? Egyptian Tools In Egypt, traces of sewing stones were found that were discovered more than a hundred years ago. It was the legendary pyramid explorer Sir William Flinders Petrie. He noticed these traces even on the sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. He suggested that the sarcophagus was carved from granite using huge cells 3 meters long. Cell marks can also be found throughout Egypt. For example, there are temple ruins near the Great Pyramid. Numerous traces of sewing have been preserved on the stone floor there. At the beginning of the 20th century, German archaeologists even deliberately put blocks with sew marks on public display during the restoration of the temple. Historians suggest that in ancient times, the Egyptians used copper saws, and since copper is softer than granite and basalt, it is assumed that the Egyptians used quartz sand as an abrasive. Voids Scientists want to make an ultrasound of a huge pyramid 140 meters high. They plan to use large telescope to search for particles that will help us see what is hidden inside. The most interesting thing is that cosmic rays are used for this. It is they who can reveal the secret of two mysterious voids inside the pyramid. One of them is located directly above the large passage leading to the king's chamber. Its dimensions are amazing, 30 meters in length and 6 in height. Scientists are not sure what awaits us inside, one large space or a series of small rooms. This may be the hidden burial chamber of Cheops, or this place played an important role during the construction of the pyramid. To solve this riddle, muons are used, elementary particles that are formed when cosmic rays collide with atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. With their help, we could build a map of voids inside the pyramid. Muons behave differently when interacting with different materials, such as rock or air. Thus, scientists can use muons to see what is not available to ordinary vision. Secret Rooms So what could be hiding inside the pyramid? There are many theories here, from religious objects and treasures to ancient scrolls full of knowledge. And some are even sure that artifacts of space gods can be hidden in the recesses of the Egyptian pyramids. Remember the story of the 90s when a robot descending into one of the shafts came across mysterious doors? The great scientists of antiquity, the Greeks and Romans, were delighted with the skill of the builders of the pyramids. And medieval Arabic chroniclers such as al-Masudi and al-Idrisi wrote about miracles, gold and mummies that might have been found inside. But not all scientists agree that pyramids served only as tombs. Supporters of alternative history argue that the Great Pyramid could be a time capsule, a repository of knowledge of an ancient civilization that, that became the basis of ancient Egypt. And there is an even more exotic theory from Christopher Dunn, who suggested that the Great Pyramid could be nothing more than a power station. And don't forget about the Chamber of Records, the legendary ancient library where, according to some researchers, all the knowledge of the ancients is stored capable of shaking the foundations of our understanding of the world. The Secret of Orion Have you ever wondered why many ancient monuments look towards the constellation Orion? Did the gods really come to our land from there, from a distant space? Incredible but true, our ancestors left us a whole system of signs pointing to Orion. They created architectural masterpieces, elaborate calendars and observation posts that allowed them to track the position of the stars in the sky. Orion was one of the most popular constellations among the ancients. Its image was even found on a mammoth task dated 32,500 BC. Studying the ancient sanctuaries on the Kola Peninsula, scientists noticed an interesting detail. If you connect the finds with conditional lines on the map, you get the constellation of Orion. And this can no longer be a coincidence. Orion seems to be everywhere. There is no such place on Earth where it would not be met. Egypt, Mexico, ancient Babylon, ancient Rus, 
everywhere it played an important role, becoming the center of heavenly space. Probably the matter is in the principle as above, so below. The ancient Egyptians built their pyramids focusing on Orion as if creating an earthly map of this constellation. And even three large volcanoes on Mars together form the belt of Orion. Just a coincidence or a trace of cosmic connection. And also, representatives of the ancient Egyptian civilization believed that their gods descended from Orion and Sirius. Pyramids when they were built the pyramids we see today are far from what they looked like when they were created. You don't believe it? Let's dive into history. Ancient engineers used an astonishing 6.1 million tons of limestone to erect the Great Pyramid of Giza. The largest and oldest of all, it was created by order of Pharaoh Khufu. But what do you think it looked like before? No, not sandy brown. It was covered with a shiny layer of limestone. But alas, over time, many facing stones were reused. This probably began already during the reign of Tutankhamun and continued for many centuries. Add to this earthquake of 1303 AD, which jolted them a little. Today, the pyramids still amaze us with their durability. For example, the Pyramid of Khafre, which even retained some of its original facing stones. It looks like one peak is wedged into another. It's amazing! On top of the pyramids were the so-called Pyramidians, covered with electrum, a shiny mixture of gold and silver. Alas, most of them have been lost over time, but some examples can still be seen in museums. Ban Ban Stone this amazing artifact inspired the Egyptians to create two of the greatest achievements of their architecture, the pyramids and obelisks. Imagine a pyramid-shaped sacred stone called a banban or a pyramidian. Every day, the first rays of the rising sun fell on it, endowing everyone around with strength and enlightenment. This stone was capped in the religious center of Egypt, Heliopolis, where, according to the ancients, the creation of the world began. However, at one unknown point in history, the original Banban stone disappeared. This stone was associated not only with the gods Adam and Ra, it was also associated with the banner bird, which, according to myth, screamed on the Banban stone, announcing the beginning of the creation of the world. Through these connections, the Banban stone became an integral part of the solar temples of ancient Egypt. The Egyptians covered it with gold and the stone reflected the sun rays, filling the temples with light. This stone became the prototype of the tops of obelisks and pyramids, which we can still observe while walking through the museums of the world. Why is it forbidden to climb the pyramid? The top stone of the pyramid is a kind of cherry on top the final touch in its construction. Given the harmony and beauty of the pyramid, it is unlikely that its builders would have left it unfinished. There is a theory that the top stone was made of gold and was removed from the top sometime in the distant past. But it's hard to believe given the height of the building, more than 140 meters. Spanish explorer Miguel Perez Sanchez suggests that a huge spherical stone symbolizing the Eye of Horus was placed on top of the pyramid. It could serve as a tribute to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky and its size and shape were designed with mathematics, geometry, and astronomy in mind. There is one interesting story associated with the top of the pyramid and Sir Siemens. Some time ago, the British inventor Sir Siemens was at the top of the pyramid and as he was about to celebrate his achievement with a glass of wine, one he suddenly encountered a surprise. He got electrocuted. The Arab guides, seeing how Siemens was electrocuted, got scared and tried to catch him, but Siemens, putting a bottle at them, hit them with a powerful electric current. Since then, it has been forbidden to climb to the top of the pyramid. Sarcophagi Archaeologists have discovered unique tombs and funerary masks that are as much as four and a half thousand years old and they were found next to the pyramids of Giza, in the heart of the ancient necropolis. Several tombs from the era of the Old Kingdom were found there, the oldest of which dates back to the 25th century BC. Ancient inscriptions and decorations have been preserved in it. In one of the tombs was Pehwang, a senior court judge and priest of the goddess Maat. He directed the rituals of purification in the pyramidal temples of the kings Khafre, Usarkov, and Nisuere. The second inhabitant of the tomb is his relative Nui, a nobleman with five court titles and a priest in the temple of Khafre. 
The excavation began in August 2018, and in order to reach these tombs, they had to move about 450 cubic meters of sand. Some tombs were plundered in antiquity but were reused for burials in the 7th 6th centuries BC. Thanks to this, amazing works of art, magnificent clay and wooden funeral masks were found among the late wooden sarcophagi. And all this was found near the cemetery of the pyramid builders. This proves that the pyramids were built not by slaves, but by ordinary people who were buried next to their kings. Signs of Extraterrestrial Visitors now we come to one of the most controversial pyramid theories. It is believed that aliens helped build the pyramids. In the 60s and 70s of the last century, this assumption became popular thanks to the book by Erik van Daniken, Cheers of the Gods. He said that extraterrestrial beings came to Earth a long time ago and helped build the majestic pyramids. Why do we think so? First, the builders of the pyramids cut and set stone blocks with extraordinary precision. Some believe that such work would not have been possible without the futuristic technology that aliens could provide. Secondly, the pyramids seem to be placed according to special astronomical schemes. For example, the sides of the Great Pyramid of Khufu align perfectly with the cardinal points of the compass. Some even suggest that this was done on purpose to serve as a beacon for incoming alien spacecraft. However, many scientists want to see evidence. They claim that there is no evidence of the arrival of aliens on Earth, and everything in the pyramids can be explained by Earth's technology. The ancient Egyptians used giant ramps to carry stone blocks to the top of the pyramid. It may sound primitive, but the effectiveness of this method is undeniable. At the moment, there is no evidence confirming the coming of aliens, and although the pyramids remain one of the most amazing wonders of the world, most likely they were created exclusively by earthly hands and minds. Perhaps someday all the artifacts will form a new picture of the past and there will no longer be unexplored secrets in history. But then, would it be that interesting to study it? Like this video and subscribe to the channel. Watch also this video about the secrets of the Egyptian civilization. See you on Kurtop.